Once a port identifies the root port, that is going to be the fastest path to the root bridge, then it needs to identify what's going to be a designated port and a non-designated port. A designated port is going to be those ports that are going to remain up and running and able to receive frames, where a non-designated port or a alternate port, or it goes by several different names, is going to be one of those ports that it will be shut down and used as an alternate route in case that the root port goes down. And so it's going to designate either a designated port or a non-designated port. So let's talk about how it elects designated ports and non-designated ports. Our next step is to elect designated ports. So after we figured out what the root bridge is, which in this network, it's switch one. And after we've elected what root ports there are, and in this switch two, this is the root port, and in switch three, this is the root port. The next is, is we need to figure out what the designated ports are. And there's really just two criteria for this. First of all, it's the lowest cost to the route. So for, the, and with this is a link by link case right here. So for this first link right here, we say which side, this port on switch two or this port on switch one is gonna be the designated port. Well, what's the lowest cost? Well, since this is the root bridge, this is gonna be the designated port. And then, so we go to the next link right here, and which is the designated port on this link? And well, whatever is closest to the root bridge. So this is the designated port. So then I'm gonna jump over to this link right here, and on this side, it's gonna be the root bridge. And then for this link right here, once again, the root bridge. So you can see a pattern here. It's always gonna be the root bridge side is gonna have all the designated ports. And that's part of, part of this is, is that whatever's on the root bridge, those are all designated ports. Uh, next, then we take a look at this link right here, and we say that from this port, this direction has the same cost from this port, this direction. So this first one doesn't apply to it. So now we need to go to the second one, which is what is the lowest bridge ID? We take a look at the priorities, they're the same, and then we take a look at the MAC addresses. This one is lower, and so now this side becomes the designated port. And we take a look at this last link, and same thing, this side becomes the designated port. Uh, one other thing to note here is if you have any devices that are hanging off of here, maybe you've got a laptop, maybe you've got some sort of server or something running, whatever's connected to those end devices, those are all designated ports as well. So designated ports, essentially, those are the ports that are gonna be up and running all the time. And then finally, what we'll do is we will elect alternate ports. These are the ports that are not chosen to be the root ports, the primary ports that's gonna be used for communication, but they're alternates or backup ports. In fact, they go by many, many different names. They're alternate, non-designated ports versus the designated ports, blocked ports, because we're going to end up blocking them, backup ports. And it kind of depends on uh, what version of STP that you're using. You'll see just several terminologies involved with this. But essentially is after you get your root port selected, and so in this case, it was these two ports right here, and then all your designated ports that are selected, then what will happen is that any ports that are not a, either a root port or a designated port are gonna be shut off. And so it comes by and shuts off all of the ports that, um, or at least goes into a blocking state where it's not going to allow traffic to go across it. So that is what happens is it elects these alternate ports. So here's the example where we have the root bridge right here, and it's the root bridge because it's got the lowest priority. Then we select those root ports. This is gonna be the root port because it has the lowest cost. So this is the root port. And then on this switch, this is the root port. 
And then next, what it's gonna do is select designated ports for each of these links. So for this link, this is the designated port on this side, this one, in fact, I could just automatically fill in all the ports on a root bridge as being the designated ports. And then between these two links right here, then I'm going to choose the lowest uh, bridge ID. So that's on this side. So uh, we've got, this is a designated port and this is a designated port. And then for each one of those links or whatever's left over, essentially the alternate ports, then we are going to shut down. So shut down those two and then these two right here. So those are shut down and we'll stop those loops from occurring.